Here's a review of the best-selling luxury car in the United States for a long time now. This is the RX Hybrid. Let's get into it. The Lexus RX lineup came back in 1999. That was the first year that this vehicle was made. A lot has changed since then. It's still a beautiful car. Um, and it's still the best-selling luxury vehicle in the United States. It has sold over 111,000 vehicles in the year of 2018, last year. And it's probably going to pace that and possibly even beat that this year in 2019. So this is the hybrid model. It keeps selling more and more every year in comparison to previous years. The RX 350, not the hybrid, still sells a lot more. Uh, but the hybrid is getting less and less expensive every year in comparison to the non-hybrid. And that is why sales are going up as well as other reasons I'll talk about later. But let's just get into the styling. It looks awesome in this eminent white pearl paint color. Uh, you can also get another white, but it's only available in the F-Sport model. So this particular one, um, let's just get into the styling. So these headlights, these are the standard headlights that you get on every single model, even though this is a luxury build. If you hear a bunch of cracking, I'm on a driveway, it has a bunch of ice in it. It's a very, very nice home. If you guys want to buy it, it's not mine. Okay, so this vehicle has the, the buy LED headlights. Here's the daytime running light. That is getting a little bit dated in my opinion compared to the modern UX and the modern ES that just came out in this past fall. The fog lights still look good. Those are fully LED. The grill has never been my favorite. However, in white, it's a little bit more palatable. Now, I don't mind the horizontal slants that much. What bothers me the most, and this is just a personal thing, is a large amount of chrome down here, this really fat bottom lip, which is just way too much in my opinion. Um, and it looks better in the F Sport model. I'll put a picture up for you guys. But this being the hybrid, you have, of course, the Lexus hybrid, hybrid emblem with the blue outline on it. And of course, there's a little camera below there, so you have the 360 top-down camera, which I'll show you guys later. So coming to the side here, and you can just see how aggressive this car is with its looks. Um, it's a very, very sleek slope windshield, and then it has the floating roof line in the back, which other people like <laughs> Nissan and the Murano really, really try to copy this car. The Murano is like the poor man's uh, RX. These wheels, you'll only see these wheels on the luxury build. I'll show the navigation wheels as well. I think these are the best looking ones besides the F Sport model wheels. They look really, really sharp. These are 20 inch wheels. But take a step back and you can see this one has mud guards on it. It's a great looking vehicle from every angle in my opinion, other than that grill. I mean, that grill is, it's, it takes some getting used to, but <laughs> everything else about this vehicle looks amazing in my opinion. So of course the belt black window or the back windows are going to be blacked out a little bit with a factory window tint. They call it a privacy screen. And then the hybrid doesn't have any uh, exhaust tips that you can see or no enclosures for the exhaust. Instead, you can see it a little bit down here at the bottom. They tuck it away pretty well. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's there. So there's the RX 450H hybrid logo. And then, of course, this is going to be illuminated blue as well right here with a nice little piece of chrome going across from light to light. You know, I think in the next one, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but like the UX, they should make, they should take out this little chrome piece and put in a bunch of LEDs running across. I think that would be an awesome design language for Lexus to really get onto uh, with their crossovers. Underneath the hood, we have over 300 horsepower, 308 horsepower mated with this hybrid Synergy Drive from Lexus. Of course, it's going to have all-wheel drive. It's got a CVD transmission. It is the most powerful RX that you can get currently in the market and actually of all time. So it's a three and a half liter V6 paired with the electrical motors and that makes 308 horsepower. It is a great, great ride. It's super smooth, good power, good torque, and very, very responsive. Oh, and if you didn't know, the car is on right now. But this particular motor is not. All I can hear is kind of a high-pitched whine. But that's what happens. If the if the hybrid battery is full, then this engine will, will kick off because the hybrid battery will power everything going in on the car. I have the heat running on the car, the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, and that's all being powered by the hybrid battery at the moment. We're on the inside of the 2019 RX 450H hybrid. I just love the interior of the RX, as I'll, I'll gush over in a little bit. 
Uh, this particular one being the luxury build has ambient lighting. You can see a little bit here uh, and uh, right above the glove box and right there on the door on that line right there. You can also see it in the back a little bit better since it's darker back there. And also being a luxury build, you get the Mark Levinson sound system. Boom, so you see in the corner there's a little badge on each speaker. And then, ooh, look at this. This is a heads up display and I haven't cleared off the windshield yet. We had a little dusting of snow last night. Um, and so I just wanna show you the heads up display because it, sh it picks up really well with the white background of the snow. So there you get a good idea of the heads up display. Obviously it says I'm in park right now. You have the sp speedometer, lane keep assist, and your compass. Let's uh, hit the windshield wipers. There you go. It gives you a good idea of how well it shows up even without that, you know, perfect pure white background even though there is still snow behind it on the ground. Okay, so let's get into the materials a little bit. Soft touch plastic here. A little plastic aluminum trim chrome handle here. Beautiful Sapelia wood with the scored aluminum on the inside. Exquisite stitched uh, arm or I guess you could say leather here. And this, since it's being a luxury build you're going to have higher quality leather and more stitching in this particular car. Uh, and that leather goes all the way around here which is really really nice because like in the ES for example this whole piece here is plastic. You see then the in the UX and the RC as well. The fold-out um, mat pocket here on the side and I just pinched myself and then here you have the heated steering wheel uh, Let's turn that baby on Heads up display button gas cap hatch You have your auto beams which come standard and then your panoramic view I'm gonna hit this real quick so you get an idea of what it looks like Most of our cars that we're getting now the panoramic view uh, comes standard with the navigation model. So this is a luxury build which it comes pretty much standard on the luxury build um, and it is almost standard now in the navigation build as well. So you can see the top down there, lots of snow. No surprise as you guys have seen the outside already. This isn't really, this doesn't change hardly at all from any RX. The only thing that's different here is going to be the Mark Levinson brand. Uh, nice illuminated clock here. Since this is the hybrid we have the unique uh, tachometer over here and if I twist it to sport mode over here it changes it. I always think that's super super cool. There's normal, there's eco mode. The only thing that eco mode shows is right there. I wish it would change this like it does when I go to sport mode but I just love that. How cool is that? And notice how the, the needle even changes as well from charge so it actually moves up to tell me the RPM. That's just wild to me. That's crazy. Super cool. Speaking of super cool, I'm going to show you guys. So here's your, your remote touch interface. I'm going to show you guys uh, some information. I just always love seeing this. Uh, on the the hybrids for Lexus. You can see the batteries in the back. We have an electric motor right in front of that battery for the all-wheel drive system and an electric motor in the front to help power the front wheels. Some more scored aluminum here. Auto parking brake. You can see the automated heated and ventilated seat buttons right here. Some nice stitching on the shifter cover. EV mode, which is pretty much pointless if you've seen it in my other hybrid videos. Uh, traction control, which is nice. You can disable that. Back in the day, I heard you couldn't disable the traction control on the hybrids, and that really killed it in the snow. But here is some document holder. It's too small for a phone. Oh, I just love that update. You know, shows the everything's going back to the, the battery right now. Inside here, we have a nice light. Um, and that's about it. Oh, pen holder. And then you also have your USB auxiliary and 12 volt in there. And you have a little hidden 12 volt in here. I saw in like a 20, 2017 that it was actually labeled here. It said 12 volt. They got rid of that, I think, in 2018. Cruise control still here. So the steering wheel is still the older style steering wheel. It does a good job, however, because they the materials are just so good. So you have that dark, dark wood here, and then this is heated right here on the side. This four-way directional pad controls this screen behind. No messages, etc., etc. I could go through that for a while. Um, down here is your radar cruise control, 
uh, length adjustment as well as your lane keep assist. Here are some of your phone controls and your hands-free system. Seat quality is excellent. You can see this being the luxury build, you have extra stitching on it and it goes all the way down to the bottom. If you just get a navigation model, it's not gonna have the stitching in the middle or this elaborate stitching uh, on the back side as well. So very, very high quality, definitely expected from Lexus at this point. And then this one also has a panoramic sunroof. So I'm just gonna hit this, open this up so you guys can see it's a very large cover. And of course, like most panoramic sunroofs, you have this bar in the middle that's needed to you know, increase rigidity and strength for the car for safety reasons. Getting in the backside of RX Hybrid, this being the luxury build, you have these sunshades here, which I've always found kind of difficult to put up, but maybe I'm just a little challenged. You have a little light in here as well for the uh, handle, and then I said, Earlier, you have this lighting here. We have soft touch material here, a little speaker that you only see in the Mark Levinson. Um, and then again, more exquisite stitching here on the side and all the way up here. Uh, the interior for the RX is really, really nice, always has been. And that's what makes it, one of the big reasons it makes it such a good vehicle. Um, I just love the two-tone. You have the brown up front um, to accent this parchment interior. Here we have a little storage cubby and then a cup holder, and that is on every RX. Nothing special here for the hybrid. Again, but since this is a luxury, we have very nice stitching all the way throughout the seats. No USBs back here, which is really, really sad. I think you might be able to get them in the RX uh, 350 and 450L. Um, couple vents back here, and I, I didn't talk about it in the front, but in the front, if you look down there, you have the all-weather mats. Uh, in this particular car. And what I love about them, uh, not only that they're super durable, they're also color, color coordinated. They're not just black, you know? So they're the, the dark brown color that, you know, matches the rest of the interior. Space back here is cavernous. I love the RX for its backseat space and for the fact that I can recline. Oh yes, I'm reclining. And this is a great vehicle for road trips, napping, uh, for if you plan on having adults in the back. It's also good good rear room for children of any size, any age, and any car seat. You can see there's just a ton of space between the, the front seats and the rear seats. Of course you have the automated rear hatch, no surprise there. Tonneau cover is not put up right now, but you see inside here we have this all-weather cargo tray. Here are the standard mats. You can see those are color coordinated as well with the brown, and there's the brown standard mat. Um, lots of space back here. This is how you fold down the rear seats from the back. We have a couple lights, one on each side, and an, an additional 12 volt back there as well. Driving in the RX 450H is such a smooth and buttery experience, especially from like zero to 15, when the motor is completely, or the gasoline motor is completely off. Uh, this thing just glides like it's on glass. My favorite thing about this car is probably the instant throttle response. And the standard RX, when you hit the throttle with the 8-speed transmission, it takes probably a good second for it to downshift into the proper gear and then you take off. Well, this CVT does an amazing job of giving you that instant feedback. There's no delay at all. There's no rubber band effect. There's nothing like that that you get with maybe some cheaper or competitors uh, CBTs. This thing is responsive and it gives you a really, really good sense of instant feedback and good power and torque. All Lexus vehicles are known for being quiet. Of course, this car is no exception. The RX has always been very, very quiet. What's better about this one is obviously you don't have as much engine noise. So Lexus will, on all their hybrids, they give it even more insulation than their standard, naturally, you know, your normal combustion engine uh, variants. They give it more sound deadening between the engine and the cabin uh, to make it not only more quiet, but the biggest thing is to mask the startup of the engine and the turnoff of the engine because it is a hybrid, so the car will do that automatically. 
And in the NX, for example, it is pretty abrupt and it's not the smoothest experience. Here in the RX, even though the motor is much bigger than the, <clears throat> the four cylinder in the NX, this car, when the engine turns on and off, it's much more subtle and it's very, very, you have to be paying attention for it, for you to even notice it compared to the NX. It's like, it jolts you a little bit. So I'm gonna be pretty conservative with the, the throttle today on my test drive of this vehicle. I wanna give you guys a good real world application um, of miles per gallon. And I, I'm pretty much only gonna be in the city today. And that's in theory where this car should shine. It should get you, uh, in theory, 31 miles per gallon in town. However, it's winter time. All electric vehicles, including hybrids, are known not to be the best at giving you, you know, EPA fuel estimate mileage um, when it's this cold. So I'm sitting here at the stoplight and the only things I can hear is the blinker and a small, small portion of the fans going for the heating system. The engine's completely off, as you can see here. There's nothing going on. It's very, very quiet, very smooth. And on acceleration, yeah, the gas engine turned on, but you have to be listening for it because it's such a quiet vehicle. Now, if I get onto the throttle, which I'm not, it does. Actually, I'll do it, I'll do it. And it's instant. There is no downshifting. It's smoothly, so smoothly got to the, the power range of the gas engine and it just, you know, shot off. No delay, nothing like that. That's what I love most about this hybrid. Instant response is amazing. And for the fact that it also has more horsepower, more torque than the, the three and a half liter 350 RX. So this is a thing that's kind of a curse by Lexus's own design and their modern vehicles, at least most of their modern vehicles, is that the visibility, in my opinion, is okay. It's definitely manageable. It's nothing, it's not super impressive though. And a big part of that is if you see up here, this rear view mirror behind it are cameras. There's just a lot of stuff that's in my vision. And the side windows are fine, uh, but the, the very back and the blind spot is not the best. However, that's why you have the blind spot monitors. So the visibility, it's okay. It's definitely manageable. Things like the top-down camera help quite a bit in the blind spot monitors, but that's just a product of Lexus's own design. They want this very, very aggressive, sharp-looking car, and as a result, the visibility suffers just a little bit. Now, it's worse in the NX, and it's worse also in the ES350, the brand new one. Visibility is not quite as good in those cars, but overall, it's, it's something you can definitely live with, and I don't think it would be you know, something that makes a deal breaker for a lot of you. I just got on the brakes on this hybrid and man, are they as buttery smooth as the rest of the car. Very, very linear, strong and stronger as you get into the pedal more and more. No vibration in the pedal, a smooth, smooth, smooth brake pedal. I'd give it an A plus, just like uh, I see in the ES350 as well as the LS500. Um, they just have exquisite brake pedals in those vehicles, and this one is right up there with them in terms of brake feel. If you like a really, really smooth, calm, quiet ride, Lexus is hard to not pick if that's what you want if you're in the luxury segment. If you're looking for a luxury crossover, this is arguably the best in the segment, at least according to sales, right? It's by far the best. However, Compared to its little brother, the NX, this vehicle is on another level of interior luxury. It's on a completely different level when it comes to ride quality. This thing kind of just glides over the road, the bumps, and even with its 20 inch wheels, it does that. The NX is a much more choppier ride. It has a shorter wheelbase, which contribu contributes a little bit to that, but I just think the RX has a much more plush uh, suspension and damping is a lot better in this vehicle. The, the NX is what I would call a sportier ride. It's a little bit more, it's louder, it's stiffer. It's hard to explain. You really got to drive both of them and see which one 
will fit you the best. But in my experience of, of selling these vehicles, a lot of people are willing to pay the extra money for, and it's about 10 grand, to be able to get into an RX over the NX because of the, the space, the luxury, just it's a much better package in general. The NX is good for its segment. It's just kind of getting old at this point. It came out in 2014 and there really hasn't been any major changes to it. So even though this car is about five years, four years old now, um, I guess it came out in 2015, so it's 2019, so it's about four and a half years old now. It really doesn't feel it. Maybe the looks by the grill a little bit as the modern Lexus grills look a lot better in my opinion, but overall this vehicle still holds up very, very well uh, four and a half years later as a 2019 model with very minimal, if any at all, uh, improvements over the last four and a half years. So what should Lexus do in the coming years with the RX? I think they should have a plug-in model. I think there should be a plug-in hybrid option for the vehicle and that would give them a, an option in the changing market over to electric vehicles. This vehicle, this hybrid in particular, does a really really good job. Lexus nailed it. But if it had I don't know, 30 to 50 miles of range, that would be incredible and people would buy it, I think, in droves and, and actually get a lot of buyers from different um, brands coming over if they offered this amazing vehicle that really has no weaknesses. If they offered it in a plug-in hybrid, I think it could only grow and boost its sales. Another thing that I think they could do is make an RXF model, which I need to do a video on why Lexus should do F models for almost all of their their vehicles, but there should be an RXF. People love the RX. It just isn't, and, it, and they love it not because it's it's sporty. It's a little sporty, but if they just had a sporty option for it, other than the F Sport, the F Sport looks good. It looks better than this the standard looking vehicle in my opinion but it's the 295 horsepower v6 that they put in all of them so if they're able to make an f variant with the twin turbo v6 that we see in the ls charge 80 grand 90 grand for it i think they would have buyers i think there would be a small market for it they don't have to make that many more options is always, always a good thing. So if they have a, a plug-in hybrid option as well as um, a ultra performance option, I don't think that would be a bad decision by them at all. In fact, I think it would boost their sales even past the 111 sales they're currently getting. It's aged well over the years. Yes, this car came out in 2016 with very, 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 very minor differences between this model and the 16 model. It still proved to be an excellent vehicle all around tons of interior space and luxury on the inside. The exterior still looks very modern even though this design's been out for four years. This car is gonna continue to sell like hotcakes. There's just no major fault with this vehicle. It does everything so well in the luxury segment. What do you guys think the Lexus should change about this vehicle? I'll see in the comments below and I might add my two cents as well.